Big man, little man. AFL, NRL. Melbourne, Sydney. This blue has it all. Barry Hall versus Paul Gallen. Heavyweights from worlds apart. You remember big, bad, bustling Barry. And he's been reported, Barry Hall, for striking. How he played for three clubs, but never really changed. A great player with, at times, a bad, bad attitude. The balls. Oh, Barry Hall has whacked behind play. That is ridiculous, Barry Hall. The trainer of fighting greats, Johnny Lewis, always said, big, bad, bustling Barry could have been a world champion boxer had that been his focus. And then there's Gow. A mean son of a gun who captained New South Wales and the Cronulla Sharks to a premiership. Forever taking on bigger, but never tougher opponents. With a left and a right from Gallon, and they both landed. His boxing skills have been clearly underestimated, mainly because of his sheer toughness. Make no mistake, this little big man is a boxer of great merit. On November 15, we find out how great. Barry Hall versus Paul Gallon. Not for any major title, but for gigantic bragging rights. Right here on Foxtel's main event. Yes, and we're joined by the man who will be in his 10th pro fight. Of course, he led the Sharks to grand final glory in 2016. The heart and soul of the Blues for a decade. And most importantly, could walk when he was five months old. <laughs> <laughs> Paul <laughs> Gallen, your yeah. mum says my that mum, My mum tried to say I was about three months old. That's what she tried to say, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far in the book. So. But she swears I could... She said I could stand up the day I was born. So. <laughs> <laughs> She's special, though, so we'll, just, we'll, leave, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it on my mouth. Spent the, rest of your life, <laughs> spent the rest of your life knocking people off yeah. their feet. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. The, the book is great, and as I said, we'll get to that in, in a second, uh, and, and the fight. Did you have anything to the races today? Of course, you had a horse in the Cox Plate. Yeah, I had a horse third. in the Cox Plate, come third, yeah. uh, and come second in the Epsom. So I've had a, had a little bit today, got my money back, which is the main thing, so I didn't lose nothing. Let's talk about Barry Hall. We saw the images of him there. Now, when you first met him, were you a bit surprised how large he was? Yeah, I was surprised how tall he was for sure. You know, six it says six four in the Wikipedia, and I think that's why. <laughs> I think he's more pushing for six five, six six. So I was surprised at, at his height and how tall he was and how big a man he is. Um, but you know, I, I'm used to it. You know, 20 years in, at, at the top level uh, against guys bigger than me, I've handled it okay. Uh, all my sparring has been against guys taller than me, so I'm prepared for it. Um, I've got no excuses. I'm going to go in there and. Quite simply, I'm going to knock him out. You know, I've got I've got nothing bad to say against about Barry Hall. I met him for the first time in Melbourne. Um, seemed like a really genuinely nice guy. Nothing nothing personal, but you know we're getting the boxing ring, and uh, I'm going to hurt him. But he hasn't fought since he was 16 years old when he had to make the decision between boxing and AFL. We know what, what happened after that. So the fact he hasn't been into a ring for more than 20 years, how do you prepare for that? You've got no video to look at. You know, you're preparing for the unknown. Exactly, and that's... Uh, look, I suppose on, on one hand, it's my advantage, the fact that I have been in the ring recently. Um, the one thing I will say about Barry being an amateur champion was that it's like riding a bike. You, you, you learn the basics as a kid, you never forget them, and they'll come back to him pretty quickly. And I've got no doubt it's going to be a really tough fight. I, I, I think he will know what he's doing. I think he'll have a nice long jab. Um, he'll sit back on his back foot and wait for his right hand and try and collect me coming in. Um, and I think once I get inside him, he'll, he'll grab me and he'll tie me up. Uh, but I think I'll be strong enough to work my way around it. I'll figure out what I've got to do. Um, and I think late in the fight, fourth, fifth or sixth round, I, I, think I'll, I think I'll be able to knock him out. Is that despite the fact that it's two-minute rounds? You, of course, wanted three-minute rounds. Yeah, I won three-minute ra three rounds. I did argue with the promoters about it. Uh, but you've got to remember, Barry's in the promoter's corner. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of the outside man coming in here. Um, and Barry's done everything that suited Barry. He's got the two-minute rounds, but you, you know what? I'm over it. A week ago, I posted on social media, it won't change, it won't matter, because I'm going to knock him out anyway. Um, he, he, he said things that suit him, which annoys me. Um, and as I said, this, this fight's been set up for Barry to win. Now, he's in the promoter's corner. He's training with the promoter's long-term trainer and mentor. Um, I think they're trying to get Barry the win, to be honest with you. I think, you I think they've done things suited for him. I don't need any motivation. Well, I'm going to get Barry this done. Barry's you off. Yeah, <laughs> he probably... <laughs> he, had, he had a crack today with a two-minute noodle, so he sort of set up a dummy that he's been punching well, let's out. Have a listen let's to that, Gussie. Yeah, that's great. Two-minute noodles, eh? Two minutes is all I need. I, I, 
I, I posted on social media, I think it was last Wednesday, you know. That's a whole Won't week. change, won't happen. It's, it's a week, it's eating away at him, so I'm already in his head. No, 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 that's a week's worth of meals for a university student. <laughs> I don't doubt that. That's destroyed and ruined. Yeah. So is three minutes going to, if you, if it were three minutes, going to suit your style in terms of getting inside him? Because that's what you've got to well, do. Well, th three minutes is what boxing is. You know, the amateurs, I'm pretty sure amateurs don't even fight two-minute rounds these days. I know women do fight two-minute rounds. Um, so it's just, it's what boxing is. And, you know, Denny Green and them guys are boxing purists. Now, we're fighting on a, a big card, a big main event card that, in my opinion, should have been three-minute rounds. But you know what? I'm, I'm over it. As I said, I'm, <laughs> I've, I've, I'm done with it. I don't care. I don't yeah. care if we fought one-minute rounds. I'll, I'll beat him. And that's all that matters. And I, and I think I'll be able to knock him out late in the fight. I really genuinely think I'll be able to knock him out late in the fight. What... Do you like about boxing? I mean, I, I, obviously, rugby league, you play it's a game, many of us are, uh, have played it, you can, can see what the attraction is. For you, what is... I, I, I'm tipping it's not being punched in the head. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it about it, that, that contest that you... It, it's a challenge. Um, look, the more boxing I do, the harder I know it is. You know, I'm training with Bilal Akwa at the moment. My, my coach has been in America with Daniel Lewis, uh, so I haven't been able to train for the past eight or nine days, but I've been with uh, Bilal Akwa and just, like, he's only a, a young 20-year-old, but just such a nice kid and, and helped me out so much and just little things he shows me. So, as I said, the more I do, the harder I know it is, and it's a challenge learning them things along the way, and I enjoy a challenge. Um, it's a physical challenge, which I enjoy. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do it for long. I feel that I've been given, you know, I suppose a sporting... Um, something in me that, that I can do sport for a certain amount of time. I'm not going to be able to do it for too much longer. I'm 38 years of age. I've just retired from rugby league. I'm not going to be able to box for too much longer. I don't plan on boxing for too much longer. So I'm happy to have these type of fights that attract a lot of people to the sport of boxing. Now, we've got to remember, this fight's about the Maloney brothers. The Maloney brothers are fighting uh, before and after us uh, on the night. Uh, they're terrific young boxers, up and coming, and, you know, they need me and Barry to attract people. And, uh, you know, if we can help boxing in that regard, then I think I've done my job for boxing. Gal, um, when you're walking to the ring for the first round, you know you're going to get punched in the head at some stage. What's the adrenaline like compared to walking out for an Orange match when you're just about to be confronted with... Three angry Queenslanders at the kickoff. <laughs> you know what? I have the same mentality that uh, it's all about my preparation. If I prepare well for a footy game, I know I'm going to go out there and play well. If I prepare well for boxing, I know what I've got to go out there and do. And I just have that same mentality. You know, I've, I've been training now for boxing for years. Um, I've been sparring for this fight for six or seven weeks against big, tall guys, good fighters. So I just know that if I've prepared well, I'll get into the ring in good shape. And I know I'm going to get into the ring in good shape. And I know if I just do out there what I've been doing in training, I'll get the result. That's, that's my mentality. It's pretty much the same mentality as football. Mm. I like the fact that you, in this book, which I really, really enjoyed, by the way, uh, it's terrific, uh, and it's the honesty that you, you show when you're on the telly or just talking that comes through in this book as well. There's a story there, because you didn't mind or you knew that you were being the villain in State of Origin, you know, north of the border, weren't you? Yep. Uh, Dave Smith, who was then running the <laughs> NRL, uh, called you when you went for the two-headed idea uh, of Queenslanders and said congratulations. In the book, it says that you... He offered you 20 grand to go hard on them again to, uh, to promote the next Origin game. Yeah, that was in the, the, the 2015 series and uh, we're taking the game to Melbourne and we needed to grow the game and, and spread the game, obviously, and he left it up to me to make sure there was not over 90,000 people at the MCG. And <laughs> well, not, there's 92,000 there, so... <laughs> You're welcome, NRL. <laughs> oh, well, what can I say? I got the job done. And we beat them down there too, but unfortunately they uh, towed us up in the, in, in the decider up in Brisbane that year. So, Yeah, look, the, the two-headed comment was just me being me. Um, I actually didn't know there was cameras in the room and then we walked out of the room and it's gone berserk and there was about 8,000 tickets left to be sold and Dave Smith rang the New South Wales Rugby League CEO and said, please congratulate you. Yeah. <laughs> we've, just, we've just sold uh, Suncorp out. So. Well, the same thing's happened in Perth and Adelaide's going to be next year. State of Origin now is an Aussie sporting event, isn't it? Not just New South Wales and Queensland. Yeah, without a doubt. And it's, look, it's the greatest rivalry in Australian sport, I believe, and mm. it's the hardest thing you'll see. It's 17, 34 guys out there, 17 on each team, just trying to hammer each other um, and trying to get the win for their state. And it's so tribal the way that we support it. And I think if we can grow the game by taking it to places like Perth and Adelaide, I think it's only positive for the game. Yeah, I echo great. Tony's points on the book. Congratulations. What I liked about it is that you don't gloss over the controversial issues, which we see so many sports people release a book and then they don't want to touch on the sort of controversial issues. The one thing that sort of pricked my ears was you said you would never have entered or played NRL if you knew how tough that Asada saga was going to be. If, if you knew that beforehand, you would never have played the game. Do you feel like now you've got closure on that issue? Um, or was it something that's just going to eat away? Yeah, it'll eat away forever. I'll never get closure on it because, you know, 
what was it the ro illegal? Was it not? Yep. There's still that question. I still speak to people say it wasn't. It shouldn't have been illegal. It wasn't any ban list. It wasn't illegal. Other people say, don't be stupid. It was. So I don't think I'll ever know for sure. As we sit here today, uh, Sada said it was illegal. So it was illegal. And um, you know, I, I just feel that me and the players have taken responsibility for what happened and we've got to try and move on. But as far as having closure from it, you know, it'll always be there. Well, uh, for those who know, think they know something about Paul Gallant, get this book and have a read of it. It's a terrific piece of work. We could talk for hours, obviously, but, you know, with the, the fight and this as well. But don't forget, uh, Paul takes on Barry Hall next week. All begins at 7pm on Friday, November 15. Head to mainevent.com.au to catch all the action from the fight that's being billed as the Code War. M M look at my name's even on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> it's underneath Barry Hall. It won't be underneath Barry Hall in the night. <laughs> Yeah, on top of him. Ding, 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 ding. Paul Gallant, thank Barry. you so much. <laughs> <laughs>